Okay, yeah. yeah, all right, let's fucking go. Yeah, right. So, so you Kiwis can just become citizens now. Yeah, like, like, just like, like it. It, yeah, it changed. Oh, yeah, definitely. because you didn't need to become a citizen as a Kiwi yeah, before, yeah, hey? yeah, because we got permanent residence over here on the like, yeah, just straight Lucky up. Lucky you guys, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, ladies got to go through this whole battle and a lot of money. Yeah, and a lot of money. Yeah, I can That's um, the benefits of being Colombian, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Hey, that's for the gangster. Uh, yo, yo. <laughs> my check, my check, what? <laughs> uh, just to clarify, my voice is sunny, um, sounding <laughs> a little bit croaky. Funny, yeah, because I'm being like sick, my throat. So. Oh, I thought I thought you got it from yelling at Zig too much. <laughs> well, that too, brother. <laughs> so, welcome back, guys. We are back. Episode, what is it? Five. Episode number five. Episode number five. We have a special guest and a dear friend, friend of the pod, Tani Yere. G'day, mate. Say hello to yeah. the fans. Wow. We're probably gonna get a lot of um views because all the girls be loving the big t yeah man let's be honest all the girls are watching because of ezekiel oh fuck off man don't say that <laughs> get me in trouble <laughs> so guys yeah. welcome back thank you for joining us again um this is a bit of a different format it's the first time we've ever had a guest um so we're juggling equipment we're not quite ready for it but hey let's fucking do it anyway just wing it just, just fucking wing, wing it, it. Yeah. So um, just to run through a bit of the format, like always, we've got Mind Mastery, where we share a lesson from the week. We've got the thought-provoking talks. Then we jump into the dropping gems. Um, yeah. So starting with um, Mind Mastery, do you want to go first, baby? Have, ah. you, have you had anything on your mind? And while you're at, have you thought about some stuff? Yeah, I did actually. Okay, Matt. Oh, good. Um, so my lesson of the week, actually, I, I did struggle with finding this one because I couldn't just think about anything. But my lesson of the week is uh, no matter what you're going through, good or bad, uh, always, or something always happens for a reason. Um, and I'm saying this because... So I feel like this week at work, it was very hard. And actually I lost my voice because of that, because I was like raising my voice a lot, working with 75 kids for around eight to nine hours a day. Um, Fuck that. Yeah. That's a lot of kids right there. Fuck that. 75? Oh my God, bro. That's that's 75 hard right there. That's an instant panic attack for me, bro. (laughs) What about you? Can you see yourself doing that? No way. No, 10's the limit. Oh man. Fuck. 10 kids. Why are you going to have 10 kids? Yeah. Well, Muslims, I get four wives. Uh, Oh. (laughs) You dreaming. Can I have four, babe? (laughs) Why? Yeah. Okay. Just you, joking. Can't handle four women. I can barely handle one. Let's be honest. 100%. Um, straight up. <laughs> straight up. Just one. The thought of one. Just handling all that. Man. <laughs> Still single over here, ladies. So put a drop Anna, drop in the comments. Way. We'll tag his, uh, all these socials as well in this app. Yeah, yes. follow me. Yes, yes. Um, so coming back to my lesson. Um, so I was thinking like for the whole week that... It was a bit hard, and I was complaining like, oh, I don't know, like working and like so much stress. But then, um, like every single day, no jokes, I came home with at least like four different papers. Oh, yeah, this is cute. From like different kids saying like, I love you, lady, um, or my favorite teacher, and like little drawings. So I was like, Man, like, you go through this, like, hard thing and it's, like, yes, painful because it, I'm not going to lie, it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. But then at the end of the day, it's worth it because when you get that um, love from children and it just makes you feel so much better. Yeah, it's nice. So We don't get that, hey, bro. But no. for Especially was, not you, bro. Yeah, none of that. People were saying, fuck off, man. <laughs> Every day. No. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you have some girls right there loving you. 
Oh, he's got yeah. a bit of that going on for sure. <laughs> Probably don't. too many men. I definitely don't. None of that. They wish they could love him. I said that to him <laughs> in the gym this morning. Man, I'm walking red flag shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, you're not. You're good. You're a nice, good guy, bro. Straight up, it, bro. You too, man. It's true. It's true. I I agree. Um. So yeah. Uh, so that didn't sound genuine, but no, it was. It was. No, I mean about T. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I'm not sure about you, babe, but yeah. Fuck, man. <laughs> you married him, so you saw something. Hey, locked it, locked it in. Locked it in. <laughs> um. So yeah, my lesson of the week is: no matter how hard you think, um. Um, are going at the end of the day um something good is gonna come your way and it's gonna be worth it so yeah that's my lesson of the week nice cool i think so because like you can just get caught up in the fuck this is shit oh, yeah, I don't the negative like, pa- negative always pa- like you know what you know you like everybody i think bro yeah 100 percent. it's just us being humans you know yeah exactly man always have those doubts and shit so bro what do you got on your mind man so like so i uh, so I'm in sales, right? And I've been doing sales for like years. And then, you know, one thing that I noticed that like stopped me from actually making sales in like certain places is limiting beliefs. Hundred, bro, in yourself. Yeah, in myself. So like that's that's the lesson. Like you know, unless the thing that the boys rave on about a lot at work is limiting beliefs. Like going into certain areas and just going into there, like, oh man, this is shit. Yeah, bro. So context, T sells um, sells face-to-face sales and has to call out to people and approach people all day long, every week. Cold sales. So, Cold sales. So you know those guys that stand in shopping centers that just annoy the fuck out of you? Yeah, that's me. I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah, fuck. And that's hard because your energy needs to be like on every day. Yeah, yeah, on all, point. All the time. 100%. And if you're not and you're walking in and you be like, fuck, this is shit then you're gonna have a shit day yeah that's it and like we just get paid commission like no base yeah so there's no safety net so like you have to be on like 24 7 when you're working yeah because like you might get a customer but then if you're not on you can just lose it yeah bro yeah because it's like a quick process too like it's just transactional job. transactional in out bam, bam, de- bam, develop bam. A, develop relationship and fucking close yeah, hard exactly ABC. And that's tough, dude, to be in that mentality all the time, and your livelihood depends on it. So if you, if you got to pay rent, you got to buy groceries, all that shit. That's it. That's uh, it. Uh, yeah, man, fuck tough. I think that's actually a really hard thing to do. Like, I think that's way harder than taking care of seven or five kids. <laughs> Honestly, sales that's no my thing. So I think you both are in sales. So I just, yeah, I, I, I don't see myself doing that. Not at all. Like, I just think it's so difficult. Imagine trying to like. Uh, make someone like buy you something and like even if, like if they are in a shitty mood or something like that like and yeah. then because sometimes you can like get that energy like on board mm-hmm. and that's so hard like but i for i what i think or what i see for the both of you um you both have like a like how know how to engage with people and i think that's very important something that i don't have that, that's not my skill <laughs> No, you got it. Wait, what happened to the mic? Sorry, bro. Right, there we go. Wait, can you hear me? Testing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I reckon you got it. Keep it like, like closer. Is yeah, that... talking to him. All right, sorry, guys. I'm amateur at this. <laughs> That's all right. You, You're learning. We're all learning. We're, we're learning, bro. Man, this is a cool little setup you guys got going on here, though. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, bro. Thank bro. you. Episode five. <laughs> oh, big T. Ep five, brother. Yeah. What, what were you saying? um no yeah i reckon you go like you know first time i met you like you're already engaging confident um eye contact and whatnot i was like oh yeah cool and like you're you're really nice like straight off the bat oh thank you and that's all that sales is is like that genuine genuine sort of um vibe like if you can if you can talk to somebody and genuinely like project that you'll have success yeah exactly because like there's this one book it's called how to win friends and influence people oh that's gun bro did i refer that you to that no bro, did i refer you nah bro i read it years ago <laughs> me too brother i think i think this was like one of the conversations that we um hashed out yeah honey bro um, it's a good book 100 percent. but one of the things that i picked up from that book is um fuck, what was it oh the thing that people desire the most is the feeling of importance, right? So if you can make yeah. someone feel important, right, they'll like you straight off the bat. Yeah. You know, that's one way to make friends or whatnot. 
And if you make somebody feel important, the only way that you got to, like the easiest way to do that is make them feel heard and talk about themselves exactly. and listen to them. Being yeah. genuinely interested in that person. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree, brother. Ah, nice, man. Um, Thank you. Yeah, go, babe. No, I'm, I'm just listening. I'm enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my lesson of the week is, I guess, setbacks. And, you know... What I mean by that is you might have some like ambitious goals. They could be in the gym. They could be trying to start a podcast and get a following. Uh, they could be like being successful at work, losing weight, like whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the key to that is having consistency and all of that type of stuff. And mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if it's, a, if, it's a, if it's a big goal, it's not easy to stay consistent. And you need to stay consistent, but yeah. it's not easy. So... You're always going to have unmotivated times, you know, your nine to five job's going to get in the way, you're going to fucking have life events, you could have like a sick family member yeah, or just fucking general laziness. But it's it's important to like have a goal and it like mapped out, bro. And babe, like, yeah. if you, like what I mean by mapped out is like you have a general understanding and you've built a routine so you get up and you go to the gym in the morning and you fucking then you go to work and then you work on your project after work or whatever. And if you don't have that little set routine to fall back on, it's so easy for those setbacks to stop you from achieving and being consistent because you don't have a plan. You don't know what you've got to fall back on. You're just having like a a moment, a week or two where you're like overexerting and then you feel lazy and then you don't know just, how to get back to the structured just plan fall off the wagon yeah yeah and what, it's and it's hard it's well, happened multiple times yeah what i think when you have like a, a long-term goal for me or what i think it works for me it's like for that long path like just cut it in few little yeah. path mm -hmm. so every time like you meet that or you achieve that it's like it's an achievement yeah even like we know that it's not the the end or what one mm -hmm. in life but i think it's a, a better way to be motivated and um, yeah. have consistency with what you want to achieve in yeah. life yeah. so like even Absolutely. if it's like if you think about fitness bro and losing weight like you've been in the in the position where you've had to commit and lose weight mm -hmm. even if somebody's like to the okay so going to the gym for an hour for lady or for myself or t is not a hard thing we build a routine around it we fucking mm -hmm. actually really enjoy it we enjoy the journey yeah, but if you're if you're not at that level, if you just start with ten minutes every single day, ten minutes every single day is better mm -hmm. than an hour once a week. Yeah, yeah. and that, you know what I mean because you I build that consi agree. consistency. So yeah. then, if you're able to then okay, well this is fucking easy and it's and it feels like it's not doing anything and you're used to that, then you move to twenty uh, twenty minutes a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then 30 minutes and then 40 minutes. And then before you know it, you're doing an hour every day and you fucking lost 20 kilos and you're killing it. Just day in, day out. Yeah. And you learn to love it. Yeah. You just learn to love the struggle. But it's like us working on this podcast. There's a lot involved in the sense that, you know, we've got to do lots of research, research algorithms. We've got to fucking dedicate ourselves to fucking, you know, recording every single week and staying consistent. But if we just do the little bits every single day when we come to the recording moment, it's not, yeah. that, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so much easier. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So, Let's move on to thought-provoking talks. And this is a bit of a different subject. Uh, we're normally talking about, you know, ADHD and all this type of shit. But we're going to talk about gym life and what it means to us, um, and we're going to get T's perspective because he's obviously a gym rat and fucking huge. Thank you, thank you. The gains. <laughs> the gains. Oh, the gains, brother. <laughs> oh, man. So... T is looking, you're looking really good. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, man, strong. Still can do those muscle-ups too and you're big, bro. That's impressive Oh, my fuck. God. Actually, I was thinking that when, when I went to go to Priceline and you told me, oh, we are going to do... Uh, muscle labs and I'm like imagine like being like so that's requires so much effort like a strength to be able to pull yourself up like do that how do you say that they pull up and then go ah muscle labs that's hard yeah 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 it, it took it took a while for me to um to, to get that locked down like like a good year 
before yeah. I start doing uh, muscle up. And like it's different for you, bro, because like I weigh 72 kilo, 72, was I? Yeah, yeah 72, 72 kilos. So I'm not a heavy guy. It's easier for me to get up. But I think like strength's all relative. Like if you're – like there's a lot of big guys that would be like, um, oh, I can't I can't do that. Like oh, of course you can do that because you weigh lighter. But my arms are like in proportion. Do you know what I mean? And my yeah. muscle mass is in proportion to my size. So you should be able to do it. And then I always – because I have this mate named Ash. Ash. And he always used to use that fucking excuse, bro. Oh, T knows Ash. Lady yeah. knows Ash. Yeah, we know Ash. He always used to no, use this fucking excuse and be like, <laughs> oh, nah, bro, it's because you're you're smaller and like... And I'm like, bro, it's all in proportion. What the fuck are you on about? 100%. And then now I just use you as a, as a fucking example. I'm like, fucking T can do it. He's like 94 kilos. What's wrong with you? Yeah, take that, Ash. <laughs> take that, brother. Oh, bro. He'll a little lash out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, bro, you know, Kelly Muscle, he's a, he's a big black dude, man. Oh he's man, like, he's huge. He's like 120, 130 kgs, bro. He's doing muscle ups like nothing. Like way better than me. Yeah. like It's man, just about yeah. building that strength and it takes like consistency yeah. basically. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like working different muscle compared to like pushing weights. Mm. But calisthenics, man. I love calisthenics. I can remember when I was like, like 18, 18, I got, when I first got into calisthenics, from watching Hannibal King. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just on YouTube. I was like, that's man. like back. That's like back when YouTube like was just popping. Hey, 2012. Yeah, I was like, man, that's crazy. I wanna be like this guy. So, just went down to the park. Just I'm um, doing pull ups, mus- um, pull ups, push ups, dips. Yeah. And then yeah, um, got 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 actually really good at it. But then I fell off the wagon for yeah. years, yo. For years, and I didn't get back into calisthenics until like, until like 27, 28. I'm 30 right now. So you got back, you got, so just a bit of context, guys, like um, T was here in Australia. He moved back to New Zealand and then came back in the um, in the middle of COVID 2021 and got fucking trapped here. Remember? Yeah. And then, yeah, and, right. and then, and then was like, hit me up. I was at work and was like, bro, I'm. I'm trapped at Sydney Airport, man. Like, can you come pick me up, man? <laughs> well, I had nowhere to stay. I had nowhere to stay. Didn't even couldn't even get a flight back to New Zealand. I was stuck in Sydney. And it's like, COVID. Like, what am I gonna do? Yeah, and then Lucky's Lucky Zeke had like a like a place for me and crash on the couch. So like, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, did oh yeah, and then yeah. I moved here. At that yeah, you moved like, here. yeah, you helped me, bro. So uh, then you stayed here for like four or five weeks, oh? No, nah, I think it was two weeks because I had to go back to... Uh, no, nah, it was th- at least three, dude. Was it? Yeah, dude, oh, three or four, hundred percent. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was wild. And then, um, so he went back and was like messaging me every like two weeks like, bro, I want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Man, New Zealand. Like, don't get me wrong, I love New Zealand. It's beautiful. My friends, family back there, but... Man, you know what? Uh, it's a different, yeah, it's different. Uh, yeah, I love, I love Australia a lot more. More opportunity, like, yeah. More opportunity. It's just more fun. You're like, you know, there's, I like, I, I think like for me, like Australia is like the place to be right now. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I agree too. Been but, here for six years. Yeah, you came and six couldn't years. couldn't leave. <laughs> I couldn't leave, yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't leave now. You're yeah, married. No, I got a husband. You're now. all locked down. <laughs> yeah, bro, fuck. Um, yeah, so then, remember, I was doing 75 hard at the time, bro. Yeah, you actually inspired me to um, jump on it, because I was like, I was a bit of a, like, fluffy cunt, I was pretty fat. A little bit, time. but you hit it well, like, under baggy clothes and stuff, like, I wouldn't have known until, actually, I didn't know until you did your before and after 75 hard. Yeah, I had a beer gut. Yeah, bro. Huge. Yeah. Huge. And then Huge. I think, I think <laughs> so like I, he started coming to the gym with me when I was like, I was entrenched. I was fucking in go mode. Five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I would go to the gym. And I, I remember him being like, oh yeah, I'll come. And then like I, the next morning I'm like, you come? And he's like, nah. <laughs> bro. Nah, I'm sleeping in, brother. Yeah. I think you prefer to go to the gym at night time, right? Uh, no, 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 I do. No, I do. It used to be in the morning when I was like living with, living here with Zeke. Yeah, because like me and Zeke were just on the um, like just on the same um train. And just we, like, we had up. we were having our menstrual cycles together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were in sync. We were in sync, but like now, now I'm staying like by myself, so I'm just like doing your thing. I'm just doing my thing. I'm still like training out um every day, 
But yeah. when, when I was here with Zig, I was like training like twice a day. Yeah, bro, we were smashing it at that point, eh? Bro. Jack. That's crazy. I can't even yeah. understand how you guys managed to do so many fly hard. I I try and I did how many days? Ten. I think it was ten, babe. I'm not sure. Not many. <laughs> Folded. Folded yeah, I hard. Mean, I think the hardest part for me is the water because I don't yeah. drink water. Oh, bro, the water's hard because you forget about it. Oh, mate. And when it's like nine o'clock at night and you still got like three liters to go. Oh, wow. bro, you <laughs> fucking. So, so there's this challenge, right? 75 hard. You have to drink a gallon of water and that's like 4.8. Or is it 3.8? Uh, I think oh, it's 3.8 oh, 3. to 4.1 or something. Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. yes 3.8 liters of water a day. You got to work out twice a day. You got to read 10 pages of self-help book. Take a progress photo. Am I missing something Stick else? to a diet. Stick to no a drinking. Diet. No cheat meals ever. No. Yeah, for 75 days. And two straight. workouts. Oh, one of those 45 minutes. One of those workouts needs to be outside. Rain, hail, or fucking shine. It doesn't matter. No excuses. And if you don't do one of those things, even if it's the progress pick... You, you fail. Do, you fail. You start from day one. And it's and you got to hold yourself accountable. You can set your own diet, but if you if you fail that progress pick and you say that you completed the, t- the seventy five hard, you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Little and bitches. what's the statistic? I rec- uh, the the program's by Andy Frizzell, and he says that like one percent of the people that try it fucking fail. Yeah. No, Do you say ninety nine percent? Ninety nine percent fail. Yeah, I believe that. Because I know, I know a lot of people that started 75 hard. And then you just see them on their stories like, you know, day one, day two, day three. Next minute. Nothing just, next. Yeah, next minute. <laughs> just no posts. <laughs> yeah, just, bro. You just see them at the club just getting drunk. <laughs> um, You know, Big Vi- uh, Big Vitu's on day like 50. Good. Right man. now. So, hey, yeah. Vitu. Love you, bro. Keep going hard, bro. Keep going hard, man, because you've done it before, but he's lost over 20 kilos. Hey, man. Yo, my guy, bro. I'm so he, proud he, of you, man. He was, he was 160 when I saw him last. 70. 170. Wow. Well. Sorry, bro. We don't want to expose you, man, but still looked good and stuff, but he's just a big guy. He's solid. Uh, Polynesian he's and... Also. Yeah. And, Huge. But, like, bro, killing it. Like, fucking killing it, man. Yeah. 20 kilo over 20 kilos that's uh, you that's know impressive. think about the population there's not many people in the world that will ever need to even like they like oh, i need to lose weight but like 20 kilos is so much man think about that in in um in mincemeat mince like holding that in a <laughs> bag bro, you, can, you can feel you can feel the whole family with that yeah bro <laughs> like, like that's, a whole week. yeah <laughs> that's crazy that's so right there. hey guys shout out um vitu in the comments um and wish him luck on his journey with 75 hard yeah Big good v. job good job uh, um like hard work because i try and it was so hard for me and like honestly it was it was hard like we were doing it but then like because things get in the middle like on your way let's oh, yeah. say well life like consistency yeah. it's fucking so hard to do any one thing every single day for 75 days yeah. but Honestly, you've got like seven hardest. yeah you've got to do like seven things yeah it's just like just doing it day in day out no rest days that's the fucking fuck it's two and a half months or two that's the fucking oh man because like sometimes you just wake up you're like man I fuck this yeah I just fuck this chill. yeah yeah, literally. I don't want to drink four liters of water today. I don't want to read. Yeah. Fuck reading. Like, yeah, you just. No, no, it's not just that. It's like sometimes you wake up like a little bit later, and then if you don't, if you didn't do one of the workouts in the morning, you're gone. Yeah. Because otherwise, you have to. Oh, do you two, need like... to do the morning workout, otherwise you're fucked. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Um, but yeah, if you want to try it, you should try. Yeah, get so, on it, guys. So yeah, but hey, hard. you should try it. Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm just. Well, let's. To... When I get back from Queensland, let's lock it in. Let's do it. Do you, it. Would you do it again, T? Oh, uh, it's a fucking yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I got PTSD from doing that stuff. <laughs> I know. I've tried oh, to do man. it again a couple of times and just buckled. Yeah. Yeah. Have you tried again? Nah. Because I know I'll buckle. Yeah, bruh. <laughs> Cause bro, like five minutes ago, we were like talking that up, saying this and that, and now look at us. It's bro. hard, man. It's, it's so hard, though. It's, tough, it's called man. 75 hard. It is so hard. But to be honest, for some reason, I think like when for it, I don't know, I might be wrong, but like doing it in couple, I think it's a bit harder because 
let's say we tried together once and one day you were like oh let's just like fail like let's eat we're hungry and then like that in your mind it like it makes you fail too don't tell the people that man. that's true babe but like we fail because yeah but you of did me. the same he, thing no he said to me we've tried oh, twice let's, let's go get mcdonald's and i'm like no we can't and he's like oh let's do it and i'm like oh we've, my we've, we've had a tough week dirty maccas <laughs> Double quarter pounds or steam the bun. Oh, I steam the bun. Yeah, yeah I always have a double quarter pound, and he thinks like it's a lot for me, but I'm like, it's not. <laughs> double quarter pound, bro. That's heavy, man. Can't go wrong with that. So let's talk. Let's talk about the benefits of the gym a little bit. What do you? What benefits do you get from it, bro? Man, so like, it's stress relief to be honest, because like with work, I get pretty stressed out with work sometimes. Like sometimes. I don't have a good day or, or I talk to a customer or maybe like if I'm talking to a girl and she's like doing my head and like, you know, the only way that I actually feel like my home outside of home is the gym. Like it, it regulates you? Yeah, hundred percent. Like it just makes me feel better just going in, pushing this weight. And um, I just love the whole gym environment as well. So I live in Liverpool, Western Sydney. Shout out Western Sydney. SA. And um, the lads in the gym, they're cool. Like, you know, every gym that I go to, like, you know, always make friends. This guy, guy j- just for context, just for context, this guy is the chattiest butterfly. fucking social butterfly <laughs> on the block, bro. Oh, mate, that's gold coming from you, I swear to God. Fuck off, man. Bro, when I go, ha- you, when I go to the gym. The caddy over here. Nah, not, oh not at the God. gym. No, okay, not, not at the gym. Yeah. Not at the gym. But in general, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. In general, he is. Um, uh, you reckon, bro? I on I have to be honest with the podcast. I was a bit scared of doing this podcast because these two they can't talk, and I'm like a quiet person. <laughs> <laughs> so just was, fucking talking shit. And I was like, babe, like I'm gonna be sitting there not putting any input because I don't know what to say. And he's like, oh yes, you can do it. I'm like, I can't. well, you know, my perspective uh, on. How are you feeling now? Because like you, you, you've been really good, like with your input and whatnot. No, I think I think I'm being like I, I'm feeling good too. That's that good. is also because um, T like like it had had a good energy and like it makes me feel comfortable yeah. as well. I but think like T important. used to live with us and T is yeah. one of my best mates. So yeah. yes, ladies like a sister to me. Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So benefits uh, for me are the consistency, man. Like, so I've got ADHD. We did a podcast about that last week. Oh. And before I was medicated, like, I, there's no way in the world I would be have been able to function to the level that I've had to with my nine to five job and all of that type of thing if I didn't have the gym. And that's the reason why yeah. I go in the morning because it regulates me to a point S- where a hundred percent. Yeah. Once once I've finished that, then I'm like ready to go. Ready to go. Um. And it just sort of like aligns me, gets me fucking ready. So that's the biggest benefit. But so like, and and like I was saying before, it gives me that like, um, it gives me that like consistency to fall back on. I don't do it all the time, but then I'm like, like I do it all the time, but then I, I, I buckle a bit and then I, I go, no, no, what are you doing? Mm. Yeah, 100%. The other day, I, what were we drinking, babe? That we like, oh, I think we, we feel it. Oh, we were drinking um, cap, Caparina. Oh, yes. So we went to um, to this Brazilian barbecue place, the one in Kuji. Um, how do you call this? Um, churrasco. There's a, there's a what? There's a barbecue place? Brazilian barbecue, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, and we like have Caipirinha. And then I'm like, I'm feeling a bit dizzy, babe. What's uh, what's that? Is, is that like an alcohol drink? Or? It's like a Brazilian yeah. sort of like cocktail-y type thing. Yeah. Oh, a Brazilian cocktail. Yeah, yeah. It's look, real like a uh, citrusy, like lemony, and it's, it's yummy as fuck. Yeah, right. Yeah. Rock, yeah. Is it like a liqueur? Uh, well, it's just like... It's oh, a whole, I, I it's just a whole mixture know. of drinks. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, um, sorry guys, back to it, um, okay. the benefits, yeah, so consistency gives me something to fall back on, but when I was a younger guy, 
Mm. And for all you young cats out there, mm. it it helped me with confidence a massive amount, bro. Oh, bro, a hundred. Like, look, okay, I don't want to speak out of context, but like ever since I've gone to the gym, mate, like my pulling game has gone like a lot better. Sky high. <laughs> Sky high. <laughs> just confident now. Just like... Just having that inner confidence, like, with myself, like, just going out there and just not actually, like, just actually not giving a fuck because, like, because, like, now I know that I'm the shit. Like, you know, like, working out day in, day out, you just, like, you had, like, this, was it, like, delayed gratification, right? You just walk around, like, like, big dick energy, right? Yeah, and without being, like, you know, too cocky or whatever. It yeah. like it just gives you like this inner inner love or whatever because you're fucking doing something, you're achieving something for yourself. No one else, just for you. Exactly. Exactly. You just you just have like a new profound love for yourself. Yeah, and and, and I think like I wanna clear this up though. Guys, you don't need to be big and massive and sexy looking and stuff to pull girls. Correct me if I'm wrong, babe, but the most important thing about pulling a girl is you just being confident. Talk. You okay. just need the talking like these two boys right here. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all. <laughs> see, like, um, see, like, what, one of my boys, one of my boys, George, right? Like, he's he's short, he's he's bit on the thick side, but man, this this guy can pull. Like, he's confident. Like, he has good chat, great banter. Like, he's just he's just a really really good guy to be around. He's like one of my best mates, known him for like ten years and shit. Yeah, and. And exactly. So it's just about confidence, really. If you can walk up to someone and just be confident in yourself, you're going to do well, guys and girls. Um, but what I think the gym does is, like, gets that started for you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no, 100%. I do, I do, like, for example, in my case, I feel like because the gym is something that you're doing for yourself, no one else is going to do it for you. This is something that you're working on. So, um it, it gives you the confidence, like, if I want to look in certain way, if I want to, like, if, if, like, I don't know, like, improve my legs or, like, my bum or whatever, like, you need to do it. So, like, it takes yourself accountable of what, how you want to look like. It, it makes you accountable. Yeah, it yeah, makes yeah. you ac accountable. So, it, that gives you the confidence to, like, oh, I'm doing something for myself. And then when you feel good with yourself, you, like, you show that, you reflect that, and then that's how it, you attract yeah, that. Yeah, it good makes energy. you... You're like in the when you look in the mirror, you're like, oh yeah, I see progress. I'm fucking doing something. Yeah, you guys been putting in the work. Like I've been seeing like massive differences. Like keep it go away. Yeah, man. And so, um, but a lot of gym goers or people that haven't yet made it to that piece where they actually love it, most people I would say don't make it past the four week mark. Oh yeah, you know they like that was me. So like, look, like I've been like I started gym when I was like sixteen, right? But I was like fell off the wagon. Like I went hard for like a couple of months, fought off, went hard, fought off, got got into like calisthenics, and then I fell off the calisthenics bandwagon when I was like twenty one. I just got caught up with partying and bullshit, mm. and then like now, well, going hard at gym for like three years. Just loving it, really. I just want to keep working out until I die. I just want to be that old guy in the gym who's just like jacked. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> the OG. And, and I think, like, you know, T's 30, I'm 32, ladies 27, 28. 27. We're, we're all 27. Young. We're, all young. we're all young. But for me, anyway, like, my working hat has changed the way that I work out M more than you. I don't think you've made it to that change spot yet because. My body's just different. It's not responding. I don't recover. You gotta make adjustments. Yeah, I gotta make adjustments, train differently and stuff. But like, I've really been enjoying that piece about it, like, and learning about my body and what I can do, what I can't do, how I've got to change those things. It's really interesting. It's but beautiful. I, I like yeah. that. Uh -huh. But I think it also falls back of what we say in the beginning of the podcast is like, you have this long term goal, but then you just like, make like little goals again the same as in, like mm -hmm. in the gym if you're just trying to achieve something like really crazy eventually it's gonna take you and it's gonna be like oh i can't really do it but then if you're like for example i remember um i have like the times and sometimes it's like i just don't want to go to the gym but then when i just go for like 45 minutes to an hour one and every day i do that i feel good with myself and it's something that i can actually do every day 
Well, then, because it works for me, and for everyone, it's different. Like, like you might have like two hours, or team might have two hours, and that's fine. But it's something that it works for you, and that's you don't need to compare any, like to anyone at the gym. Yeah, but for those people that don't make it past the four week mark because they're like sore and they can't be bothered and all of that type of thing, what they haven't realized or they don't get yet is that now for you and for you and for me, it's if I don't go to the gym, I feel shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate taking risk days. Oh I my god! Hate it. Like mentally, physically, I'm like fucking lethargic, and I'm just yeah. feel shit. And and it's crazy to think because like when you first start out and you haven't made it past that four week mark or six month mark or whatever, you're tired, your body hurts, and blah blah blah, and you don't necessarily see the mental gain that it's giving you straight away. But then. Once you make it past that, it's like, oh, if I miss the gym, I'm like, oh, man, I'm feeling shit. It's it's kind of like the honeymoon stage of, like, a relationship, right? Like, when you get into it, it's all exciting and whatnot. Yeah. Like, you know, the motivation is there, but motivation only lasts for, like, an X amount of time. Yeah. Then it comes down to discipline, right? Yeah, so commitment. Then, mm-hmm. Exactly. So, like, when you, when you can't be fucked, when you don't want to go to the gym, that's when it matters the most. A hundred percent. That's oh. when you're going to get the most benefit mentally, physically, yeah. because you just fucking, even if you, sometimes I'm, I really don't feel like it and I'm fucking sore or whatever, but I still I go yeah. and then I'll just stretch out and do some cardio. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm still like that as well. Mm. You know, sometimes I wake up and say, oh man, I can't be fucked. But then, you know what I do for motivation? I look in the mirror. Yeah. I look in the mirror, I look at my legs, I'm like, God damn, they're small. <laughs> I'm my legs. Oh, I used to bully, give Tay a bit of bullying oh, about his legs. All the fucking time. Uh, he, I, I, I just have to say, sick is a teaser. Oh my God. Just have a little, I don't know, something wrong with you. And he will like point it out to you. I'll identify it. And he, he loves the bands. Yeah, I'll identify your weakness and, and play on it. It's good though. It's good. Everyone needs a friend like that. But like kindly, like I'm not. You know what I mean. Like obviously, fucking whatever. It makes you stronger. Hundred percent. Imagine her. I fucking pick on her head. Oh my goodness. You just want to prove them wrong. It's like fuck you, can't. Watch <laughs> yeah. <this>. And <laughs> that's that's the whole point. Fucking do something, yeah. bro. Minor setback for match comeback. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, okay. Big topic now. Um, which is I've got a little exposure to this topic. Lady has a little bit, I think, in the past, but um, I guess we want your perspective to you, and that's steroids. Yeah. So I think that in general, in society, there is a bad stigma around it. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty open about it. Yeah, which I admire actually, because like at the end of the day, you should be able to do whatever you want with your body, but you should be able to do it safely and blah blah blah. So. Why I want to talk about it is I want to get your perspective on how it's mm-hmm. changed your life, um, yeah. the goods and the bads. Yeah. And then also I want to talk about a bit of dosage and stuff like that because I think that there's a lot of kids out there taking steroids and probably taking too much. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I've met a few of them as well. So, like, so can we start with can we start with the... Context. We'll the, 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 goods, or, the goods. The goods. So, what, what does it make you feel more confident? Like, what, what do you gain from it? Yeah, all right. So, like... I, so at the moment I'm only taking like testosterone, so I'm like I'm pinning it, so I'm putting it in my butt cheeks like every week. So that's that means he's injecting it. Yeah, injecting it, hundred percent. Um, so I don't really feel anything until like four or six weeks in, and then I was like, so so sorry, you you've been ta- you take it for the first four weeks and you don't see any drastic change. Nah, nah. First, wow. first you feel it. First you feel it. So you wake up. You wake up. You, there's like there's like a bit more bit more of an oomph to you, like you know, like when you think about like testosterone, it's like the hormone that makes a man a man. So like I'm just like injecting the shit into me like every week, and then like you just have like more like you just more in the go. Like you're in the gym, you just have like more of a so like more stamina, more stamina, like more able to get through the sets, 100%. work out longer, and then obviously recovery. Re- recovery is great on it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And like pushing a lot more weight now. Yeah. So, um, so my my experience on it is so you've got two types. You can take um, digestibles, which you take, which damage your liver highly. The uh, they're prob- the orals. They're probably more dangerous um, because they they got to pass through your liver and they damage your liver. And then you got the injectables. And I've it, when I was a young man, I took the, um, the what did you call them? Digest um, orals. 
orals and like not like having to wait four weeks like literally the fucking next day in the gym you are beast mode and then as that builds like dynavol and anavar and um oh, and anapolin yeah i've had anavar before that's sick I like they're, this shit. but they're fucking dangerous so yeah you need to take um milk milk thistle milk Mi- yeah milk thistle and like uh liver guard or whatever yeah so some liver cleaner so like whatever orals you take you gotta clean it you gotta flush out your liver too because if you don't take it, it can fuck up your liver big time and take yeah. a, get blood test too so get get tested make sure what your test levels are check your liver function yeah, all that shit. 100%. i mean like if there's either one out there who's i mean like if you're going to the gym right like i was okay so what got me into testosterone first like honestly i was just i was just impatient like i was i was pretty i was pretty like i like, had a good good shape to me good form bro before you jumped on you were looking fucking fit. You were shredded in the shoulders too. Those delts were just popping from skipping and shit. From skipping, yeah, it's ridiculous. You want if you want fucking shredded delts, do skipping every day. Skipping fucking works. But um, yeah, I just wanted to um, just fast track the the movements. I, I wanted to fucking cheat. Is what you wanted to do. Yeah, wanted to fucking cheat. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I, I don't really know anything about it, but I just have a genuine question. This is based on my experience when my, my ex used to take them. Yeah. Does it change to like your mood? Yeah, 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 in your head. Oh, yeah, I feel great. I feel like so much better. So uh, I'm taking test E in F8, but there is this steroid called Trin, right? And then Trin, yeah. that's what makes people go crazy and shit. So that's that where you think that that's the one that's saying like the roid rage. Yeah. stereotype yeah that's where the roid rage comes from is trend <laughs> so like before i jumped on steroids i like did a lot of research i spoke to my mates who were like bodybuilders um. or, or our mate and then like he was giving me like advice and whatnot what to take what to start off with i was like okay cool um i went on to youtube more plates more dates man oh yeah he's he's pretty transparent i like his channel man yeah no he's um have you watched him good. babe more plates and what no uh, he's, he's good he's he's the guy that um did uh has the supplement for um gorilla mine it's at um tercosterone yeah um but they found out recently that it wasn't wasn't clinical doses and shit there's big fucking hey i heard about that I yeah heard about so he was crazy. always like paying out on other brands being like oh it's not a clinical dose like fucking that's why i've yeah. invented this and then his shit wasn't which is fucking oh, man that's a shame it is, so but he's. I, I still admire him. I think he's. I think he's. Um, his channel's a really good channel. He's got a massive following. Yeah, hundred percent. So I think like something like everyone should know, like no, at least for example in my case that I, it's not like everyone says online because um, a lot of people just say like it, a lot of negative things. So what like like the the it, like you need to do some research and talk to people like knows about it and like use them before then like um so it can give you like a, a really good experience well yeah so it's not hard for you and i think let's touch on that because when i was um i think that that's really good advice because do your own research and talk to people that have done it not just yeah. research online because you're going to get conflicting information potentially go talk oh, to a doctor 100%. like a doctor's going to say don't fucking do it yeah but you can say, okay, but if I did do it, what is going to happen? And also talk to me about dosage because mm. when I was first buying it, I was really young and basically got advised by this guy that was selling them in a, in a, in a protein shop and he just wanted to sell more. Yeah. So he wanted me to take them and come back and buy more. Yeah. And when I started, to, I was just, uh, and I didn't know. So then I was just taking some dose and later on in life i was i said oh, i was taking this and people that have actually you know actually bodybuilders and and regularly taking steroids were like bro that was a way too much yeah. dude like what the fuck are you doing yeah exactly so like so like i'm taking like 250 mils a week so i like just put that in context so you got trt which is like testosterone replacement therapy which- which is big in America at the moment yeah. for, you know, men 35 and over. Yeah, so like when guys, when we grow older, our testosterone levels drop naturally, right? So TRT, we just bring it up to, um, 
just normal. Like, like in natural levels. Yeah, just natural level. So they're injecting anywhere between 100 to 200 a week. I'm taking 250 a week. So, so just, just slightly above, above that. Just and and above, you're probably yeah. not at the point where your testosterone re- testosterone levels are below the natural. They might be, you know, 90% or something. Yeah, yeah. My test levels are just like above natural. Supernatural being over here. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Lifting some, moving some weights. Yeah, so. 150 keys on the fucking bed. That's massive. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think it's crazy because I, ju- I'm just basing on the experience when, when my, ex, my ex used to take it. He used to be so angry and cranky all the time, but like, I can see like T and he's just like sweet. But like you got to remember, should. naturally T's a chill, chill cunt. Like yeah. you're chill ass. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're way chill. more chill than me. Yeah, so with with Trin, right? So like, if you're if you're like an angry guy, or if you, if you have anger issues, and if you jump on Trin, yeah, um, it can make you go fucking crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just I'm just keeping the basic man. I'm just taking testy, just like just like every week, and and not too much, and all that type of thing. Yeah, because bodybuilders they take like five hundred to wow. thousand milligrams. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, that's crazy. So okay, um. My experience is I did the orals and then did it for, you know, I did a couple cycles, a couple of different um, thing and not long cycles, not 12 week cycles because it was basically I was too scared to inject the stuff and I just wanted to take the easy way out yes. and it was probably more dangerous. Right, the first time's fucking always scary. But it's fucking terrifying. You feel like you're like going to inject some heroin because you grab a needle, give it a good flick, and just like you're just staring yeah, at it. Yeah, dude, like <laughs> that's fucking extreme, man. And it's yeah. not like you know, it's it's not as sanitary as it probably should be, or fucking whatever. Like you're not a nurse, you're not trained in injecting. How fucking terrifying I, is that? I, I just have to yeah. say that I used to inject my my ex with that, and I used to be freaking out like I was gonna kill her every <laughs> single time. Yeah, because she's a panicker, so <laughs> yeah. uncomfortable situation. He's probably just going, fucking do it, and she's like, Argh. yeah, um, yeah. See, so there's this place that you, you go to needle exchange. Like they give you okay. This is valuable information. Yeah. So needle exchange. This is where all the junkies go to get yeah. needles and shit. So I was like waiting in line. There's all these fucking heroin addicts around me. So I was just like, um, I went there and I was like, oh, I got some steroids. I'm gonna put it on my ass. Like, what I need. And she was like super f- professional about it. She was like, well, you're gonna need this needle over here to take it out. You're gonna need this needle here to put it in. Here's some wipes. Wipe it down. Wipe this. Wipe that. Did she tell you when, uh, did you ask the doctor or did you ask her where you should be ingesting, uh, injecting and can you explain the triangle? Yeah, so there, there was a doctor there. I was like, I don't know, so, so where's the best place for me to put it? Like my shoulders and my cheeks? Or the, or the, the safest? Yeah, yeah, the safest, easiest. And then um, she was oh, let me go ask one of the doctors. Doctor came out and then he, he drew a chart. So he drew like a butt cheek. He drew it in like four quarters. He was like... This top right hand quarter over here on my right cheek, it's like you just want to put it right there. So I was just yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. But I, I, I remember I used to put it in different areas for him because he used to say, uh, like, tell me that it was like really painful, and then the muscle is like it the gets so tissue. hard that you can't go yeah. in yeah, in the needle. So How that, do you manage to do it yourself? Oh, looking in the mirror. God, that's how, hard. How many times were you injecting him? Like twice a week or? I think it was like a every every two days or every three days. Oh, Jesus Christ! This cunt was on some big right, stuff. He was sending it. Was, no, it, was he was he massive? He like yeah, like he was pretty big. But then oh, like one weekend and his chin was massively like his muscles and like the traps huge and stuff. Man, he was he was on a crazy cycle. Yeah, yeah. Cause and I, did he do it consistently I, I, or did he roll? And that's up? the problem. He used to not do the cycle. Like stop the cycle, and apparently that's really bad. Like um, apparently that like, you need to like have a break. Have a yeah, break, that's yeah. T. Doesn't have a break. I'm cruising right now. Yeah, but you're not <laughs> take. You're not doing those heavy cycles either. So it's no. maybe more uh, sustainable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm just taking those small amounts because, like, oh man, one bad effect. So like my first cycle, wow. like, I got I got a bit too confident with it, right? So I went from two fifty went up to five hundred. Wow. And then. Yeah, so double up my dosage, and then you know what? So over what period? Uh so I was like, 
I was like 12 weeks in, hitting 250. So I was like, oh, fuck, I might as well do 500. So I creeped up to 500, like 13. For like three weeks, three weeks in, I was hitting 500. And then I started seeing like my back knee started like fucking So big, up. big acne. Big acne. Started hair, seeing like hair, hair loss. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And then I was so like, like patches. Yeah, yeah. Patch, I was like, oh fuck. Your this. body was just freaking out. Yeah, so I was like, and it was my first cycle too. Dumbass, just got too confident with it, right? Yeah, and I'm sure there's loads of kids out there dealing with this man. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So I was just like, so so I I jumped off completely, um, which was probably a bit silly because then your body's going through withdrawals. Yeah, which made it even worse, and then my acne just fucking flared out even more. So like, I got like mad scars on my back. Wow. Right now. Like the acne is gone, but I got like scarring there. Probably really? There for like, yeah, probably there for like. So six. the acne is completely gone, but, or you might get a little bit, but you've got the scarring. Yeah, yeah, I got the scarring. Yeah, I, well. I, I just think like what, what you're saying when like you are doing something 250 and you like the results. It's like anything. Like you like something and you're like, oh my God, I just want to go off, yeah. off for it. And it's easy to like, and it, and, uh, well, I don't get, know about you, get Tika. carried away. And then yeah. people become addicted to that, right? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Well, you. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I put what I can for what I can see or I can hear from you. T, like you're doing something that is sustainable to your lifestyle and it's not like affecting you massively. And that's actually like really good. Um, I hear something from my ex as well. I remember he used to take like women's um, hormones to like. So is that Annabelle? Yeah, like, no, that's a level up. Is that uh, no, no cl- dicks? Cl- uh, cl- what cl- 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 What's that one that shreds you up? Oh, clembuterol. Cl- clembuterol, clembuterol gets you shredded. Um, Anavar gets you shredded too. So girl, well. girls normally take Anavar or oh, clembuterol. Girls, girls yeah, do take Anavar and clembuterol. Yeah, they do. Yeah. No, but I think like what he used to do is like oh, take, estrogen blockers. Yes, exactly. Oh, like, like he used to no, like Nova dicks. Yeah, like something like that. He used to like like drink something to level up and not like go all the way like cranky because yeah. he used to be but I, insane. But I think what that is used for is because when you use too much steroids, you can um, get this thing called gyno. And gyno? Uh, so, yeah. which is... Which is, ball, which is a ball, which is a ball under yeah. your, yeah. Massive oh, muscles. yes, I remember he used to get that thing. Oh, he who, used, your ex? Yes, he used to, yeah, and then he needs to reduce them. So, because that, it was so like that's the problem. estrogen blocker. Oh, mantides. wow. Yeah, I don't have any mantides. And, and people that, basically when that forms, babe, um, that gyno, uh, you can't get rid of it. You've got to get, if it gets too big and, and you get surgery. that problem. So bodybuilders have surgery to remove the gyno. Yeah. Yeah, because wow. it's basically breast forming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's that it's that fat tissue that a woman has uh, yeah, starts and, forming. And that's what, um, please correct me if I'm saying something completely crazy or wrong. Like maybe the trans women still like, uh, like um, grow uh, their, they, their uh, So yeah, trans women take women's hormones to grow breasts, yes. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't agree with all that. Man, that shit's so weird. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, let's not touch on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's too difficult. Like that is a complicated topic. Oh, my yeah. God. And you know, loved everybody, but um. Yeah, everyone. We'll we'll, we'll we'll leave that. <laughs> so um. That's okay. Like everyone have their own, like everyone own have opinion. Their own, yeah. Like yeah. everyone have their own opinion. I mean, like, like, look, like, yeah. Well, yeah. Whatever makes you happy, you know. Like, do you just don't force it down other people's throats? Well, yeah, that's it. Same religion, that, but, but, sex, all but that. But that's exactly. something that it bothers exactly. me. Like, I am like, whatever you want to do with your life, go for it. But like, it's the fact that sometimes they want to make you feel like if you are in the opposite, opposite like, for example, again, it's like um, um, lesbian or gay, it's like you wrong. Like, everyone have their own opinions. So the same way you want to be uh, supporting them, if someone wants to be against them, like, they are allowed to be like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. everybody's allowed to have their own opinion, entitled, you know, entitled to their own thought. I think that, um, I think that if you want to be Christian, if you want to be Muslim, if you want to be trans, if you want to be gay, whatever, you're allowed to. But yes, you're right. When that that certain person, person, religion, or belief starts making it like. Pushing, yeah. pushing people to be able to 
like you need to be like this or have this view that's not that's that's not a good it's like a video that we watch and we watch this tiktok remember and then um so this girl was like um oh so do you support girls like uh girls getting like surgery like oh no it starts out it starts out like this it goes do you um, what do you think about men taking steroids? Oh, yeah, 100%. It starts all the oh, way yeah. around. Like, and, and the girls were like, no. no he's not he a real like, man. Yeah, he's he cheating. It. And then what? the guy was like, okay, okay, what do you think about girls getting surgery to get their boobs done? I'm or like, like fake lips and stuff. And, and they were like, like, oh, yeah, yeah. your body, your choice. I'm like, oh, Your body, okay. your choice. The double standards. Oh, bro, so just cool. straight con- like straight um, contradiction. Like, what the like, fuck, man? man? Like, man, like... If you are like, oh, like if you're defending yeah. your belief, like, or oh, your body, your choice, you should also respect the belief that another the f- person. The fucking, the ex- yeah, Keep like the what? Energy. What's up with that? The fuck, man? Uh, uh, I would say that the audacity. <laughs> the, the audacity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, but well, okay, so dosage. Um, so what would you recommend to a young person that is taking too much or doesn't know what they're doing. All right. Um, look, for, like if you're young, like you know, I don't, I don't suggest taking testosterone because you, you don't need it unless yeah. unless you want to like compete, make some money off it. All right. Well, then like talk talk to guys around you who are doing it, right? Who've been doing it for years. Go see a doctor. But look, when when I started, this is what I did. I just jumped on testy, test nethate. I ran like 250 milligrams a week for like 12 weeks yeah and then i just took anavel um at the beginning as well i just ran some anavel with it and okay I, yeah cool because there's gonna be kids that are gonna go well fuck you i'm gonna do it yeah exactly i mean like look like like before anything get your blood work done see what your test levels are at first because like look, so, so and like what your liver function is so if you exactly. do it you can see if you've damaged them at the end of the 12 weeks and then if you have damaged yeah. them then you can be like okay i'm not going to do that again yeah yeah exactly exactly and like you don't know, take regular blood work so you can make minor adjustments here and there yeah i think that's very important. good advice yeah i think it's very important because uh, let's be honest but regardless of people saying like you shouldn't do this you know whatever like if you want to do it you're gonna do it you but i just it. yeah just, i just need I, I just think that the you just need to be um get some that knowledge be, from people be smart that know yeah exactly take so, some advice we know everybody every young person is just going to do what they want and whatever but yeah just but, but no you don't have to be young to be like that you just yeah or to do something like that jack like is so if you want to do something you're just going to do it yeah. it's like um it's like drugs exactly right. um, you just have you just have to be or be surrounded by people that it knows and it's going to give you a, a good advice and it's not going to take you to the wrong path of Yeah, and of I'm, that. I'm not saying don't do it. If you want to do it, do it. But yeah. just fucking be a bit smart. Do your research, take your time. And do it safer. Yeah. Hey, I just have one question. Um, last Drinks, most importantly, hey? <laughs> How nice is it just hanging out with some mates, doing a little pod, having a chat? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, I, I noticed that um, T and Sick, every time like they lose their vape, it's like, oh my God, panic, I'm having panic. a panic attack. Yeah. <laughs> Where the fuck's my vape? Where is it? Yeah. Where is it? Oh, God. Yeah, so I guess... Um, uh, wait. I'm gonna say something because I'm gonna. Um, oh, yeah. This is the last. last oh, Sorry. what I was gonna say. Sorry, oh, yeah, there's yeah. so much noise there. We're gonna have to start again because all of the. Very sorry about that. Uh, so my last question is: Once you finish your cycle, let's say a person like, for example, me, and I try, I wanna do like some gains at in the gym, and I do the cycle of. 12 weeks mm-hmm. and I like I look gray and blah 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 my mm-hmm. bum is like bigger will I lose that after I stop that and I don't want to do it ever again yeah yeah no, I mean like look you'll you'll lose you'll lose a bit, a bit of gains for sure um but if you keep going you, you'll be fine yeah so and I think this is the problem with steroids is so that was my experience uh I was having recovery I had massive gains and then to be honest because I only did uh, orals, I feel like 
the it was so drastic the change i just like it was like i was a balloon and then somebody put a pin in me and i just popped but to be honest i was young and i wasn't training as hard as i probably should have been coming off and i think that if you're training hard on roids and you jump off your cycle you need to train keep training as hard or if not even harder to maintain yeah because like you know when you jump on um like testosterone what's the um thing in your traps like your your um testosterone oh fuck i forgot the word a- a- androgens yeah uh yeah androgens yeah so Andro- like, and androgens Andro- androgens yeah. yeah yeah androgens yeah so like like let's just say if you jumped on one cycle and then when you get off and you, and you stay off for the rest of your life those and- androgens in your shoulders and whatnot they've 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 been changed for like the rest of your life right so like so like technically like like let's just say if you've done one cycle and jumped off and like you never touched it ever again technically you're not you're not actually natty like yeah you may not be on the cycle but you've done the cycle so like your body's like forever change so so meaning that you potentially have grown them and they have the yeah. capacity to be bigger than yeah, if yeah. you had have never done it exactly exactly oh so like for example like you're telling me like it, like in someone like me that goes to the you know the time and i do a cycle of 12 weeks but then i continue like i stop doing um asteroids for my whole life but i continue training and like building i will like like keep up with you like, have the potential oh, okay see uh, see I, I, don't, I don't know about that because i know with testosterone, if you if you inject testosterone, your androgens and your traps and your shoulders like they've changed, right? So you so you have you can only in that spot, not in your legs or your no, nah, not 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 that enough. Because I was talking to like a, like a dude who's, who's a bodybuilder, right? And I was like, man, like if guys do one cycle, like you know they're not they're not actually natty. Like yeah, they may not be touching anything, but they've they've changed their body. Right. Oh, okay. So, so, so I don't know. Like, I don't know for women. Like, it might, it might actually change. I've never actually met. I probably have, but I've never actually met a girl who's who's been on roids. Well, that's what I, I want to mention that next, uh, actually. But um, I think, babe, because women that women can't use certain steroids that men would use, like t- straight out testosterone, and well, they yeah. they, well, they, they can. can. But it's, too dangerous. But it's gonna make it's gonna do some weird shit. Yeah, they sound like men, and they get like very hairy and whatnot. Like I was like, I've met. Oh, actually, I like I have met a girl who's on steroids. She's huge. She's bigger than me. Just like her shoulders, her traps are just like boom, and she sound like a man. There is some girls that is like, I'm not gonna be too specific because I don't. If for some reason she sees this, but we see it one girl at the gym, um, our gym. She's so strong. And so she fucking looks strong, so man. big. But she, but she looks good. But she doesn't look like big, like oh, is she, like a man. Is she South American or no? No, no. I think she's white. Really? Yeah. Have I have I seen her? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably. No, no. I I think she's been coming after you. We're going there. Well, I don't know. Uh, but oh, she's man. so as strong. It's crazy. It's yeah, crazy. and I think that she would be on like Anabar or Climbeterol or yeah, something. something. Yeah, yeah. Girls, girls usually run Anabar. Yeah. I love Anabar. Anabar's great. So um, yeah. I've uh, did I try Anabar? No, I didn't. I did da- Dynabol, which was. Oh, you did Dynabol? Yeah, which was insane strength wise. Like, I'm holy not, shit! I'm thinking about jumping on some Dynabol. So <laughs> yeah, Dynabol. Like, I only did six weeks, but literally, like, because it's only got a short shelf life, um, running in your system of like four or five hours. But you take it and literally, like, put put a plate on, extra plate on. Yeah. Each side. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, honestly, bro, I was just, I just couldn't believe it. Um. And then I did a Naplin. Oh yeah, Never yeah, heard. yeah. I I don't know. I, I don't know. I read some stuff after I did it, and it was like, I was taking way too much. Really? Oh. But I but like so Dynabol, I got strong, yeah. really fucking strong, and really quick. Um, but and 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 a bit of size, but not like excessive size. Yeah. Um, and then when I did a Naplin, I got a little bit stronger, like nothing like um, Dynabol. And that's what the expectation was, I guess, mm-hmm. because I was like, oh, mm-hmm. but I just puffed the fuck up, man. Yeah, I saw like, that photo of you. 
huge. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like what? And my mum saw me, and she was like, "Excuse me, like." <laughs> Uh, Are you doing steroids? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably because your mom is one of those persons that she she will bring up what she noticed. Like she doesn't keep anything uh, to her uh, to herself, and then she, if she see, saw you like big, she will be like, "You're doing something." Yeah, sure. but I've got a really open relationship with my mom, yeah. so I was kind of like, um, I I was like, I'm thinking about doing this, and then I was like, oh no, I won't, and then I was like, oh, I'm fucking doing it. <laughs> yeah, I've got a, I've got an open relationship with my parents as well, like um. When I went back to New Zealand, I think it was for their uh, for their anniversary, the twenty year anniversary, and then like um, I, was, I was sitting at a table, and then my brother was just joking around. I was like, "Is like, you on steroids?" So I was like, "Yeah, I am." <laughs> and then um, he must have told my sister, and my sister must have told like my mom and dad, because like I was getting ready to go out somewhere. I was putting on my shoes, and dad was like. Boy, can I talk to you? Oh, so like, God. I was like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> I was like, are you on roids? I was like, yeah, I'm on roids. He was like, oh, you, you know you know what they'll do to you, right? I was like, what's that? So like, you'll go crazy. I was like, no, nah, I know what I'm doing. And he was like, w- w- why, why don't you want to be natural? I was like, because I want to be supernatural. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. That Shout is. out to T's dad. What's your dad's name? Dwayne. Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne. Yeah, he's that. He's cool. That's about it. Uh, last time I went back to New Zealand for like my 30th birthday. Um, fucking, I was in customs for like ages. I was just waiting for my bag. Dad gave me calls like, "You're good." I was like, "Yeah, I'm all good." Just waiting for my bag. I was like, "Oh fuck, I thought we got pulled off for customs for trying to bring in steroids." I was like, nah. <laughs> "Oh really? <laughs> yeah, oh, but your parents so are no matter what. Your parents are always gonna worry about you, aren't they?" Yeah, yeah for sure. exactly. For sure. But like, but shout out to the parents that regardless of what you're doing in life. They so supportive. Oh, and they like, are. And then you can be open and talk about things without feeling judged you know by them. It's not my case, but good on you guys. I reckon, <laughs> I reckon you guys will be great parents. Eh? Oh, oh thank you think you. so? Thanks, bro. Yeah, Appreciate that. Yeah, no, you guys are like understanding and whatnot. Like good chit chat. Well, I think that's so nice if a parent can like put a, put a, put aside their beliefs and try to guide you but let you be yourself and yeah and no matter what you're going through in your life they just go okay my mum's like this mum i love you um my mum's like this where okay regardless of the situation it's like uh, when i've come to her and been like hey i need help she's like okay well what are we gonna do about it how do we how, how do i help you how do we yeah. Thing yeah. Versus, oh my fucking god, freaking out and being yeah. like, you're a fucking m- mess up or whatever. Like, she's just, she's the best man. And mm. parents that like, you know, parents that are like that. It, if you great, um, if you're lucky enough to have a parent like that, you know, it's a wonderful experience. But I just think, um, um, as humans beings, I think you should be able to go through any process that you choose to, because you're gonna learn the lesson. So yeah. if it's something bad for you. And if it's bad, you're going to realize like, on your own that it's bad for you and not because someone told you it's bad. So it's same as, like, for example, asteroids. Um, you do it and it was not good for you. You at least try and you know that it's not good for you. So not because someone else is telling you, like, oh, don't do it, it's not good, blah, 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 when probably they didn't even try before. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I think there's a really bad stigma around it. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, you take it, you're going to die. And, and sure, like, if you take... A ridiculous amount and do it unsafely and you just don't have rest and you've taken fucking dosage and you haven't researched yeah. it sure you might lose um shorten your life expectancy but if but you man, research it yeah and be responsible like anything alcohol smoking vapes yeah. fucking med- you know adhd medication antibiotics like if you do anything too much yeah it's not it's not good yeah for sure i mean like look like like me jumping on steroids yeah there's a huge possibility that i am like shortening my like lifespan but you know what if i do die at a young age (laughs) i don't want to die strong and happy like you know (laughs) like like you're gonna be you're gonna be like a coffin that was like two times the size so it's like boom come on it's fucked i don't think you're gonna do that and if you do (laughs) no no no, but like the whole point of like him saying this is like sometimes like back to like in the beginning of our podcast when we're saying sometimes we don't do things in life because we are so scared and we but for example like obviously nobody wants to die but then you're gonna go and then you're like oh i didn't try this and like this includes estrus you know um 
So whatever you're doing in life, just do it and laugh. But just do it safe. Just um, be safe. So the, we're the, not condone. I need to say. Yeah. We're not. Con- we're, it's not professional advice. It's our opinion. Yeah. We're not condoning taking it or not taking it. We're just having a conversation about. Yeah, your, no, your I'm, options yeah. and 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 that type of thing. Yeah, and if you're is, gonna do it, just research it. This is only our it's on, experience it's on you. and perspectives on things. But so let's continue with the podcast so we can finish our podcast for today. Right. So, all right, let's go with. Think. Dropping gems. <laughs> Yo, are, are you vibing this thing? Uh, my name is Tony Yeti, I eat it like spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really good. Um, D, do you have a, a dropping jab for us? Do you have anything that you try or trick or anything that you want to recommend? So it can be a product, it can be a podcast, it can be whatever anything. you like, man. Bit of advice or a little trick that people are going to benefit from uh, or that you've bene- benefited from. Yeah, actually, freaking playing chess. Playing Ooh. chess, I love playing chess. You know, it's it's good because it helps you like, like, like think ahead. Helps you like think outside the box and whatnot. Yes, like, like a like a brain like a brain test, like a brain game. Yeah, for sure. Like um, like if you come if you come around, oh bro, you should see my chess board, bro. I got a mad oh, chess I board. I saw it on Instagram, bro. I was like, he's finally bored it. Gee, yeah. yo, because yeah. we were talking about it. We we were you for about a year. Too. Yeah. Yeah, but it fucking I bought like the. Ten dollar Kmart one. It's still chess. I love it. But, I would uh, love to learn how to play chess. I just think it's insane. I only know how to play checkers. <laughs> well, you're better off learning from T than me, babe, because he's better. Oh, that's good. Well, maybe one day we can do um a night where uh, we can play some games, oh, and then Matt, you just teach me. You know, you you guys can come around now because like, I got like spare bed in the um. Oh, the do you? Bedroom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll cool. come stay out west, bro, for sure. Hundred percent. Have barbecue for you. And the Aguile. Aguile. <laughs> Yalla Habibi. We'll bring uh, Little Oreo to come for a join. 100%. <laughs> yeah, actually, that sounds like a mad Yeah, one. so T, T, it's it's Uncle T. Yeah. Or our little dog. And obviously, when we have a baby, it's, well. it's Uncle T. That's our, he's, he's the brother. He's the, he's the bro. Well, yeah. thank you for the, for your gem. Um, baby, oh, what is your before, gem? Before we move on, um, I've got a mate. You know him, Tom. Oh, Tom yeah. Cash, Cashman, yeah. um, he's gone at chess. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Did you play? Oh, I, I was like, I was watching him move. Like, uh, like there was um, he was he was playing someone else, and I was like watching him. What do you uh, mean playing somebody else? Uh, What's the scenario? No, no, no. Is that your bugs? Um, What's the scenario? Oh yeah, no. Yeah. But didn't when you were in Melbourne, you play him? You did. Oh, didn't you just hang out? Yeah, we did hang out. Did we play chess? I don't know, bro. Melbourne was like a long time ago. Yeah, was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I was like four years. He's he's a gunner. He's just he, a smart he, he cunt is, all over. Nah, he is yeah. super intelligent. Intelligent bloke. Shout really out, nice guy. Yeah, shout out to Cash. <laughs> Cashy. We all, we mention uh, all your friends in here in this podcast, guys. Do, do I wanna, hope do you, you want to shout out a friend, uh, Melissa? No, no. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Melissa? You guys, uh, um, what do you say? I hope you guys are watching this podcast or listening to this podcast because we mention all of you. You fucking better be. And shout out Melissa and Adam. Yes, in Melbourne as well. Um, so uh, give me your gem, babe. My, my gem. I'll keep it short. I could talk. Yeah. I, I could do a whole. I'll keep it short. I could do a whole fucking he episode. You can do a this. podcast two hours nonstop. Don't yeah. worry about just, it. Just zig by himself. Yeah, hundred <laughs> <100%. laughs> um, percent. Okay, so my dropping gem is AI, but um, there's there's a whole bunch of hype around it, or not hype, or people have tried to use it and oh. been like, oh, this is cool, but not necessarily had any traction because it's not that easy to, to use. There's a whole bunch of tools that you can find that will help you with social media or your daily or whatever. But in particular, I want to talk about chat GTP, um, mm. either three or four, uh, open AI. And I just want to say that if you haven't explored it, go explore around with we it, go, go, go play with it. Um, because I, I watched this video and it was like, all these people scared about AI taking over, people losing their jobs and because, you know, AI is there and it's going to replace the, you know, the, you know, certain people's jobs and all that shit. And this guy that is like, um, it, 
he's one of the developers of it, the inventors of uh, ChatGTP. And what he said was AI is is not going to take over people's jobs. AI is going to take over people. So people that people that don't use, use this. people you that use AI are going to overtake the people that don't, don't use, use AI. It. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, facts. You know, so I can, see, I can definitely see that happening. Yeah, man. Like perfect examples. Like um, like when Chat GPT first came out. Yeah. Man, students were using on, it for their fucking essays. Well, on. that's right. And Smart and and now it's been banned, and they say that um, you you can't use it, and they've got these algorithms that can read whether it's been done. But now there's these other algorithms that take away the yeah. the signature from it and shit. Man, anyway, there's ways around it. It's AI, artificial intelligence, man. Yeah. But it's one of those things. It's like the internet or whatever. It's it's not easy to use to start with, and mm. About two months ago, three months ago, it was all over social media. Do you yeah. remember? Do you remember? Yeah, everywhere. It was everywhere. And if you look now, it only if you're one of those people that watches, yeah. it will show up. Yeah. Before, it was everywhere. But mm-hmm. it's one of those things that the masses try and use it, and it's not that hard to use. And, no. then, and they don't know how to incorporate it into their daily workflow or life. And then it fades away. And the people, it's like learning how to code or something like that. And there's actual jobs now for AI prompters yeah. and getting paid 350K in the US to be able to br- build a prompt database and make it work to, the, to a company's advantage. So my gem is if, you're not wor- if you don't know what it is and you haven't tried it, go try it. Mm-hmm. And then the next step is start to integrate it into your daily workflow. Use it to help you write emails, use it to, it, it is basically so easy. If you want, okay, so let's just say you're doing a podcast and you're like, fuck, I'm out of ideas. Go ask it. Give me fucking 20 ideas yeah, on on to podcast describe, topics mm-hmm. in this. You just have to describe like the type of podcast that you are running and then it will give you just so many ideas. And if you're not liking what he's saying, you just need to like prompt it um, to be more specific to your needs. Yeah, you just keep keep going and it's really good it's really good but okay so podcast is an example but if you write a blog or you need yep. to improve your seo on your website or you need it to help you write emails for work like yep. uh, an email that used to take you 30 minutes to to run through to edit you you write it then you read it again and you edit it and blah blah yeah. blah. take you 30 minutes turns into a fucking one minute exercise yeah. so if you get 50 of those a day half an hour each one you fucked or 10 minute each one you fucked your day is done yeah. or mm-hmm. like someone like me that english is not their first language and you need to improve your um, grammar like grammar for example i work um and i need to write emails all the time and sometimes i need to write like or do documents and i i'm not gonna lie i struggle but uh this helped me a lot so yeah try. it's crazy it'll just it'll turn into a fucking nothing well, yeah like so easy Good gem, babe. So I'm going to give my gem. My gem is not that meaningful like you guys. <laughs> so um, That's okay. My gem is use Vaseline. Use Vaseline. Use Vaseline. But in what context? Holy context? moly. No, no, no. You guys are going, <laughs> getting out of control. <laughs> what are you up to, bro? No, 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 no. If, like in many things, you can use it for your lips because um, if they crack in, especially during winter, another one is you can use it on your pores at uh, points. Um, then you just spray like your perfume on top of that and it stays the whole day. Even if like you like sweat a lot, honestly, if you just sweat a lot and you put the Vaseline on your underarms and then you put the deodorant on the top, it stays the whole time. No it's, way. Well, that's weird. But isn't it blocking yeah. up your pores on your underarm? It is, but like the the. But no, Don't do that, people. So uh, it doesn't make you sweat. Um. No, I think it makes you. S- no, I do sweat it still, but like the the other one stays more. Sweaty girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And like, and also in, on your face, he teaches me all the all the time like that, guys. Like he's he's a bully. I'm telling you, he's a he's a bully. Oh, only the, only the people I love. And, uh, if and you're not getting bullied by me, then I don't love you, man. Yeah, yeah. man Straight I have to cope nice this. To you, he doesn't like you. God, <laughs> I have to cope this nightmare the whole day, every day for the rest of my life. All right. Poor Thank, me. Hey. 
just a big shout out to Tani at T. Thank you so much Thank for dropping so in, much. bro. Oh, it's been me. so nice to have you back around the house, actually. Yeah, but, yeah, man, cool. but also just on a on a on a different level where, you know, it's a. Yeah, that's fucking cool, man. It's Thanks for joining. Crazy, we appreciate man. and supporting us, man. No, yeah, hey, thank you so much. Hey, you guys got a mad setup here too. How how did you find the experience? You love it? Yeah, shit, it's sick. You're going to do your own? <laughs> shit, you know what? Man, you can't well. talk. You can't talk. Yes, I, I think you would be Yeah, really you got good. the you, you got the gift of the gab talking and just find your little niche, niche, niche bro. Yeah, shit. It's not Obviously, it's the gym. It's the gym. I couldn't it could I could be wrong. It could be something way more intellectual than that. You're a smart guy. The Full Sin Podcast. Oh, uh, okay. I think that name's taken, by. <laughs> no, and honest, and on, on one thing that um, T does have, it's like you're so bubbly, and yeah. uh, in, yeah. and it's really nice to like hear you talk, so it's really good. Oh, yeah, bro. Sure. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. But All right, guys, we've just got one last section. T is where we take some photos, <laughs> some thumbnails. So, so. It's, so it's my for the camera right there. What, this one here? Oh, wait, wait, did it? <laughs> wait, are we gonna take it off? Yeah. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Just remember to follow us on our social media, yeah. Two Hearts One Home, uh -huh. and share. And the only thing that we ask for, um, if you listen to this podcast or watch this podcast, is if you got something good or you learned something from this podcast, just share it with someone that might need it. Share it, please, with your friends, your family, or somebody that you think would love it um so like comment share subscribe subscribe fucking subscribe. support us sub support us guys but comment so we want the goal is to do a q a session for the viewers so please drop a comment and we will feature you in the next episode yeah. we really appreciate it thank you bye <laughs>